We, we so dragged. there's the existing house. We kept the house. And we excavated underneath the church. And we can't afford to break down 600 square meters. And mm -hmm. besides, it's the house of the, the bishop of the Anglican church. You know, he, he didn't want to move out. Finally, he had to, but. <laughs> so here, uh, the idea is that uh, when the, as the church has more money, they'll keep on growing the building above. And this is the first uh, floor being already. Uh, that, that white part that you see is the original house. They just took the roof off at a certain point because they realized that they would have more space in the inside. You know, you just take your roof so off. So this is a building it. in progression. The, sp the floor plan is totally open planning, and we use steel uh, uh, structure in between the floors so that you could feasibly create interconnections and cut the beams. So we did it also for a reason, because the, the house that you saw, uh, in, uh, let's say at the, end, at the end of the day, it was probably more expensive to keep the house in that particular case of the bishop than to break it down. However, we convinced him uh, to, to follow that proposal and create something which is quite interesting. By keeping the building that he already had, and you have to transform or, or project this concept now in a bigger scale on, on existing uh, barrier structures where people don't want to break down the house. You know, that's a, more like a conceptual question. They don't have any trust if they break down the house that they get anything better. So you might have to take on a little bit of higher <laughs> investment uh, but you prove that there are solutions possible and you take it on from there. We were able to create a structure that bridged the house, which is underneath this floor plate, and put in only one day, we had to ask the people to go out of the house, but in only one day a, a, a crane came in, a car crane, a mobile car crane, put up those steel beams, uh, these this metal corrugated sheets, uh, Los Acero, where you just pour concrete on top, but the moment where you put those steel beams up, they all screwed together, bolted together, and the, um, we're also working in the execution of those projects, so we'll be standing on the crane on top of the sides, uh, drilling on the screws. The moment you have this Los Acero on, people can go in again and start working. So this is really, that means you have to leave your house for it's one It's real day. fast track. You leave your house for one day and you can build an eight-story building on top of it. So these are just some of the drawings of uh, uh, conceptual. This was all done, as we say, emergency. So another area we're working is stairs. Stairs are where the infrastructure is taken up the barriers. Um, and uh, you might see here the, the real difficulty of the, of the access. So you can compare to reach this little uh, square that you see is actually where, the, where this dry toilet stands. So the person who, 114 lives, meters. who lives up at this dry toilet has to walk up the stairs that correspond to a 39 floor building. Due to the building rule of Caracas, from three floors on, you need an elevator. But building on a hill where there's no infrastructure to access it, you have to walk up a 39 floor building. So in our, in our view on the, on the informal city, we actually don't see the, the barriers and agglomeration of individual buildings, but we see it as one mega building. So in that way, we thought something has to be done. And we created another system that is now like also available in a sort of a prefabricated set, which is constructed out of tubes and a sort of distributed platforms, which is this round area. It's all welded together uh, and screwed together, which just can add almost like uh, what you know from, from your kid's time, cutting out little, little cardboard elements, etc. You can get those pieces. You just order the length of the tube. We can calculate how many stairs fit on it with the uh, height differences, and that's what you get. So this is, uh, this is what the government ministry of transport has planned to have a train station in one of the valleys, Charayava, in this case, outside the city. And, um, and then you, you transport onto some buses and you go into the city. In, uh, in our case, we thought there's a huge airport, inner city airport in the middle of Caracas, which has now been uh, prohibited as an airport and as a military base. So our proposition was bring the train station into the city. Um, and by doing that here, we wanted to keep north-south connections, so we raised it 
and we, we left space for the train to come in, and this raised the level of building uh, envelope that you can build along the sides by raising the, the height of the airport. The cone of approximation. The cone of approximation to the airport. So this is a hypothetical uh, view of it for Caracas in 2030. That also creates obviously an enormous uh, raise in the, in the land value because this cone of approximation rests right now on top of the city limiting uh, uh, buildings around the airport to uh, sort of mini skyscrapers. So what now we'd, we'd like to um, t give you, leave you with a little bit of a takeout, you know, some points that you can take home and reflect um, in this transition to an urban world. We do not believe it is possible to separate the concern for people from the concern of the city. The city's fate is today closely linked with, the, with virtually every aspect of human life. In the closing section, we'd like to propose an agenda for the future based on what we've learned so far and to describe how such an agenda can be relevant to others working on the similar topic. Our agenda calls for people from a great many cities and a wide variety of disciplines to consider an evolutionary scenario that leads from the present urban context of conflict and collision to a more just and sustainable future. We're not calling simply for an open-ended or unfocused speculation. We live in an age of an increasing uh, specialization, and for good reason. But the city is a complex system, and specialization must be supplemented by integration if we're going to adequately understand it. Perhaps architects are particularly well-trained to integrate disciplines. At the Urban Think Tank, we try to offer a platform for all disciplines of work. To, we meet, we uh, meet to do the research and to develop and build an equitable place to live for all its citizens. In recent years, we've invited people from countless disciplines and from more than 19 countries to join us in taking a crude look at the whole in addition to coming up with precise acupuncture-like urban interventions. We believe that in addition to the architectural and design dimension, more and more we will need to consider environmental, economic, and social questions as we intervene in the city. First and most importantly, we need strategies to, for sustainability. The example of Caracas illustrates how poverty colliding magnifies with the local geological and climatic hazards. Particularly in urban areas, urban and human activity has created a multiplicity of environmental problems. The solution exists. Wealthy cities such as Caracas can reduce geological and meteorological risk through massive public works, for example, by mitigating the risk of landslides with terracing over the hillsides or a number of other things. But we need an understanding of the true scope of or footprint of these urban areas. Only, you know, as we said in the past, two and a half percent of, of arable land in Venezuela exists only. We need an approach to planning and arch architecture that acknowledges the centrality of resource management issues. We need to protect our natural uh, environment, which is in Caracas, vast. The mountains, the wetlands, the diverse ecology. We need a redefinition of infrastructure of the road, not to reduce congestion, but to facilitate public transport, to encourage air movement, to create green ecological corridors. We need a redefinition of the park, not just a public recreational park, but a water collection park and a storage aquifers that stores aquifers and ecology reserves. We need a new economic mechanism for reducing greenhouse gases. Let's pay the informal city to harvest solar energy. We believe our generation has the ability and the responsibility to address these sustainability issues. But the question is whether the metropolitan population growth in South America will flatten as a result of foresight and progress towards a more sustainable city or fluctuate as a result of the traditional scourges of war and conflict and famine and pestilence. If the curves of the population and resource depletion do flatten out, they will do so at a level that will permit a reasonable quality of life, including a measure of freedom and the persistence of a large amount of diversity, or at the level that corresponds with a gray world of scarcity, pollution, of regulation. It's really our choice to make. 